Hey dudes and dudettes, it's Simon Hurley and welcome back to another video. Now in the past I've done videos on ink blending brushes and ink blending and I'll link those videos up in the top corner. But in those videos I also demonstrated and compared how to use the Ranger mini ink blending tool with the foam on top. And a lot of people said they struggled with blending with this and over the years I've used these a ton and have absolutely fallen in love with them. So in today's video I'm going to share all of my tips, tricks, and secrets to getting perfect ink blending every time. Let's get into it. All right, so the first thing that I wanna talk about is cardstock. And I know I've covered this in a couple of different videos, but I wanna do it really quickly here at the beginning so that in case if you haven't seen those videos, you can see here. So this is a different kind of cardstock that I used to use before I started using my Stark White cardstock. And the difference between this and my cardstock is this one has a little bit of a coating on the surface. You can't really feel it when you're just touching it, but it does a good job at ink blending. It kind of smooths out like that. One thing that I don't love about it is it's really easy to make fingerprints because that ink is just sitting on the surface and struggling to dry in the surface. And then if I went in and I wanted a darker, more rich, vibrant color, I can go over top and it really doesn't give me a darker color. It just kind of adds more ink to the surface, which then again adds more fingerprints later on. Now here is my Simon Hurley Create Stark White cardstock. You can see already it's a little bit whiter, but I want to just show you guys that if you bring your ink onto this surface, you can already see it's a little bit darker. It still blends the inks nicely so it doesn't dry in the surface, and any harsh marks I'm getting, I can blend that out just by going over it again and smoothing them out. So here you can already see that I can lay down that color really nicely, but let's say I want a little bit darker and more saturated of a color. I can go back into my ink pad and go in here and blend that a little bit darker. All right, so look at this compared, and you can really see you get a lot more vibrant and saturated of color in here, and you can smooth out the marks just as nicely. So I really prefer my Simon Hurley Create Stark White cardstock, and no matter what cardstock you're using, if you're having a hard time blending with it, try switching your cardstock out. Because you really want to make sure that you have a good quality cardstock and a good quality ink when you're blending, and both of those together will give you a great quality blend. All right, so now let's talk about the blending tools itself, because I think this part at the very beginning is super important to your blending and how the results come out. So here are the blending tools. They come two in a pack, and they've got Velcro on here. And it also comes with, I think, four foam pieces, and you can buy replacement packs of these as well. So that way you can have less handles for the amount of foams you have, and just replace the foam for each color, which is pretty nice. So what you're going to want to do is take your foam and line this up perfectly. It's going to have a little bit of a border all the way around, and you want to make sure that border is perfectly even. If it's not even, let's say you put your foam on like this, even the slightest bit of having that unevenness is gonna give me rough edges because this is touching the cardstock and this is a little bit too floppy and not holding on. So you just want to really make sure that you take a little bit of time at the beginning to make sure that's nice and lined up. In my blending brush versus blending tool video, I started out with my tools like this. And this is how they're gonna look after a week or two of constantly using your blending tools because then the ink will get kind of soaked in and saturated and it'll be a little bit smoother of a blend. But what if you're just getting started with your blending tools, right? And they're just that white foam. But let me show you how I want you to blend. I see a lot of people going into their ink pad like this, tapping a couple times, and then you can see that there's a little bit of a tiny ink haze on top of that foam. But when I go in and I blend, that's gonna be nothing. And that's gonna take ages and ages to layer up. I'm giving pretty good pressure when I'm tapping, but it's gonna take a long time to layer that up and get a really nice saturated blend. So what I recommend doing is taking your ink pad and swiping. With a good pressure in here, go in and swipe or go in a circular motion. You really just wanna make sure that it's moving, right? Instead of just tapping on your surface and getting a tiny bit of color, moving it across the surface is gonna give you tons of ink. And you can already see that huge difference there. It's kind of coating the edges a little bit and it's also getting lots of ink into that tool, which is really great. Now the good thing about this foam is it still kind of resists it. So you'll still see that ink sitting on top of the surface. That just is really nice because this foam is designed to release your ink instead of saturate it and take it all in. So then I'll go in and I'll start my ink blending. 
Sometimes you can start off the edge and then start blending in. And if I have any harsh marks, I'm just gonna keep bringing that color out, lighten my grip a little bit, until I get it nicely blended out. If I wanna go back in and make this darker and more saturated, since I'm on this Simon Hurley Create Stark White cardstock, I can totally do that and bring that color in a little bit more. So here I tapped my tool, I did two layers of that, and that is what I got. And by swiping my tool with two layers, this is the kind of color vibrance and saturation that I got, and also that longevity, right? You can really bring a lot of ink on your cardstock just by swiping it and getting much more ink on your tool. Now, I don't always follow this next tip, but one tip that somebody in my Facebook group, Stamping with Simon Hurley Create, I'll link that down below in case if you wanna join it, had recommended to tap off your blending tool on the side of your paper before you start blending to get rid of any excess ink. And I think that's a really helpful tip to get rid of harsh marks and make sure that you're bringing in a nice soft color at the beginning. So if I go in with my Midnight Snack here, I load it up with ink and then I tap off to the side on my craft sheet, you can see that it's releasing a little bit of ink onto there and then I can go onto my surface and start my blending. You can see that that starts off with a little bit of a lighter color, so you don't get that super harsh dark color right away, and then I can blend in to a lighter color onto the surface. And you can see that definitely does help with bringing in a little bit of a softer blend, right? It doesn't start out as dark in that corner. So if you want more of an even blend, try tapping off on your surface, that also can help to get rid of any harsh marks if your ink pad is especially juicy. Now what if I wanted to start smack dab in the center of my project and I wanted to still make sure that I got a really nice blend with no harsh marks? I'm gonna go in with my Guppy ink pad here and a new ink blending tool. You can see this one is already saturated with ink, which is totally fine. I'm gonna share that with saturation because after a couple days of using it nicely, you'll get a nice saturation on your blending tool, which helps to get a nicer blend. If you want to, again, you could tap off on the side of your surface here. I'm going to go in and bring in that ink right in the center. You can see that there are a little bit of a darker mark there, but as I go in and continue to blend that out, you'll see that you get a really nice blend out to white. The reason why is because I can go in, start on that same spot in the center, and then start blending out. And I'm not adding any more ink onto the surface here. I'm just blending it out to the white using whatever color is on my sponge, which is really helpful. That gives you kind of that nice gradation, and then once it goes out to white, it just gives you a really nice smooth blend out to that color. And if you do get any harsh marks, like I got a little mark down there, all you need to do is go in with your blending tool and keep blending it out. With the Simon Hurley Create inks especially, they were formulated to, if they have a harsh mark and you keep kind of blending them out, they'll move and they'll kind of smooth that out, which I think is really awesome. So there is a blend directly from the center of my cardstock. It's got really nice soft edges because we only went in with what was on our tool and we didn't keep going back in and start on the edge here. We started in the center and blended it out and that gives you a really great blend every time. Now I also wanna share how to lay down color really quickly and get really nice blends for ink blending backgrounds. So I'm gonna go in again with Midnight Snack and when I'm doing a background, it's really important to apply tons of ink onto the surface to save a lot of time here. And then I'll go in on my surface and start blending it out. You can see I'm already going in a little bit faster than I usually would, just blending it out to smooth. And this is because I don't really need to make sure that there are no harsh marks when I'm going in to blend a background. When I'm doing this, I'm really just doing it to lay down the color. You can see with the Simon Hurley Create inks, you really don't get many marks even when you're going this fast. What's special about my inks is when I go in with that next color, so I'll bring in a little bit of Prom Queen here. What's special is that when I blend those together, it'll get rid of any harsh marks anyway. So that's why I'm never really worried about them when I'm creating a background. I just lay down a nice dark amount of color, and when you're using Simon Hurley Create inks, that blending will come naturally. Then I'll bring in a little bit of Guppy, and I'll go in and blend these all together. If you're struggling to get a smooth and even blend between some colors, try going back with the other color with a little bit of a lighter hand and bring it a little bit more into that. That'll kind of help smooth out the line and defining factor of those colors and create an even nicer color in between. And notice how I'm not even dipping back into my ink pad, I'm just using whatever ink is still saturated on that tool. So here is that finished ink blended background where I've added tons of color down and it's got some really great quick blending and vibrant colors. Now usually I'll go in here, I'm gonna take my flower garden background stamp, add a little bit of water down onto the stamp, and then I'm going to go in 
and stamp this down with water. So that water is going to actually lift off my color. So that's why I want to add as much saturation as possible and I don't really worry about the colors blending too much because usually I'm adding a ton of stuff on top but I just focus on saturating the color down there so I can do a super cool technique like this one. Let's talk about when you should replace the foam that's on top of the tool. What's really nice about these is you can buy this foam in kind of a large pack for pretty cheap and I go through these packs pretty quickly because I use the heck out of my blending tools. So every like two or three weeks, I find that I'll need to replace some of the blending tools or colors that I use a little bit more often. So you'll see here, this is one of my blending tools and it looks kind of fine, but when I go to this side, that foam is starting to separate away from the blending tool. And that's gonna give me an awful blend because when I'm trying to go in there, it's just going to lift it up every time and give me really harsh marks. So sometimes when I see with people blending, blending tools like this, it's like, okay, well then you're not going to get a good blend no matter what. And you have to know when is a good time to replace your foam. So at this point, I would peel that off, peel, start holding this part down and peel this off. And then you can go in and add a new white foam on top of that. I actually like the fact that you can really easily replace these on top. I know that they're gonna sometimes be trash after a while because going on the edge of paper always will rip up foam and especially if you use and abuse them like I do. But I prefer this because I'm not throwing away a handle every time. I just get rid of the bad foam whereas with a dauber or a plastic dauber that's attached with a sponge on top, you have to throw that whole thing in the garbage can and buy a whole new one. Whereas this, you just have to buy packs of foam and I like that a little bit better. All right guys, so those were my tips, tricks, and secrets with everything ink blending. I hope this video really helped you guys out. I get a lot of questions whenever I do it so easily. It does definitely take practice, but all the tips I provided in today's video will definitely help move you along your ink blending journey. Leave a comment down below if you have any tips for ink blending or what tools you like to use to get great blends on your surface. Also give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Be sure to click that subscribe button down below to never miss another card making and crafting video like this one from me. And I'll see you all very, very soon for another card making video. Have a wonderful day. Bye.